run-ins. I've been getting into some run-ins lately. Had a little run-in in a place called uh, Walgreens. Yeah, or as I call it, the wall. I had a run-in with a guy down at the wall, and I'm going to tell you the whole story, but I'm so excited right now. I'm going to tell you the ending first. I'm going to tell you the ending, and then we're going to Tarantino it. We're going to go from the end... <laughs> we're going to... We're going to go backwards in time through this joke and figure out what I did to make this guy say what he said to me. And this is what he said, and I'm quoting, I'll fucking kill you! (laughs) Let's go back, let's go back. I know, you're like, what? What is it? Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Once again, he said, I'll fucking kill you! Let's go back. So I go into the wall. And right off the bat, I have to say, what is it about the Walgreens? The second you walk in there, you just want to steal. <laughs> There's just something about the lighting that makes you really want to steal half of the things. You still want to pay for half. It's not stealing if you pay for half. But I'm not going to pay for scrunchies. I'm not. You just shove those in your pants. I don't need scrunchies, but if I'm getting blown, sometimes I like to throw her hair in a... It's always good to have a banana clip or a scrunchie right nearby me. Maybe some Aquanet. High five. Love head. I'll fucking kill you! So here's how it went down, right here, okay? I had a problem with this guy right off the bat. And I'll tell you what the problem was. Let's just say for the sake of argument that the mic stand is the person at the end of the line, what I consider the official line. Let's just say this is a skinny black man. (laughs) And he's staring at the gum because that's what you always do in your line. You stare at the gum. You just stare at all the gum and you say to yourself, God, that's a lot of gum. There's so many flavors of gum here. What do I want to chew? The problem that I have with the other gentleman is that he's not committed to the line. He's not standing in a way that says to me, I'm a part of this community. I'm going on the journey with you to pay for my shit. He's doing that little floaty dance that people do where they don't stay at the line. They do this thing where they kind of... They do, it's called the floaty dance and they touch everything, right? They just keep touching stuff. Here's my belief. If you're three feet away from the person in front of you, you're in line. If you're in the Pantene Pro V section laying down reading Us Weekly, you're not in line anymore. You can't just leave your shoe and walk around for 19 more minutes. I kick your shoe away. I say, fuck shoes. That's what I say. If you know anything about me and my history with shoes, I say, fuck shoes. Your shoe does not represent you. Neither here nor in a court of law, you son of a bee. Sorry to use harsh letters. He's a son of a bee. So this is what I decide. I make a decision. Sometimes in life you have to make decisions. I made the decision that I was going to do something I haven't done in ages. I was going to cut in front of this guy. I was going to do cutsies. Which I haven't done since uh, eighth grade. But you know what? I still know how to do it. I still have the wherewithal to pull off a cut of epic proportions. And when you cut, it's not just, hey, you can't just flop around. You can't just flail in there. It's like double dutch. You gotta kind of, you gotta feel it. You gotta feel when it's time to go. Cutting is like double dutch without ropes. I basically just told you what you already knew. (laughs) <laughs> so I waited till the guy was facing northeastish, and then I made my move I did this I went and I slid I just slid in and I knew you're looking at me you're like whoa, whoa where did Dane go I was like an illusion just then that's how good that was a couple of you were like I'm concerned where did Dane go I'm right here I'm right here now the first rule of cutting as you all know once you're in the position you never look past your perif ever again You don't look past here ever again. Why turn and look at the face of doom staring back at you? No, you look towards the future where there's a counter and there's 
chapstick and things that maybe you didn't need in the store, but now that they're here, you're like, shit, I do need tweezers. You look towards the future. Because you know at some point, whoever is coming around from their little floaty dance are going to see that there's a different combination of color and clothing in front of them. (laughs) And when they do the math, they're going to realize, I've been cut. (laughs) There's two things that you can do when somebody cuts you, right? This is the gamble you take when you cut. Either you're going to get the person who right away is like, hey, 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 right? And they're going to squash you back. Or you'll get the person, like this person, I'm so glad he did this. He didn't just say, oh, you cut me. He opted to make angry sound effects. <laughs> he comes back around, he's like, That's what you do. You do this thing with your hand where you point at the person's back and then you look at the people behind you. Right? but again i've committed i'm looking towards the future i've got my one item i've got some uh, deodorant which i needed right even at that moment i would like to have applied some because i was under pressure i get to the front of the line and again as i'm paying for the merchandise i can hear him being he's behind me and he's seething he is seething okay you could taste his anger it was in the air you could actually go wow that's palpable that man is very angry taste the air he's really pissed I pay for my merch okay and then I start heading towards the door okay and I'm calm I'm cool I'm collect I'm being really savvy the way I just kind of walk towards the door but inside I'm celebrating I'm like shazam inside my head That's what I say to myself when I'm excited. I say Shazam. And I see myself doing this, but I don't really do that. Because if I didn't say that and I just threw my hand up in the air, I look like I'm in the Special Olympics or something like that. I start heading towards the door, okay? I'm excited, but this guy, again, he is so angry at this point that I got away with it that he finally just had to say something, okay? He had to let me know how angry he was. And I don't know why he went with this first. The first thing he just grabbed out of his brain, he went, yeah, nice! (laughs) Which I thought was an interesting choice. Out of all the things you could say, and especially in that tone, you could say anything in that tone, and I get, yeah, cinnamon bits! (laughs) Yeah, seafood salad! I get it, you're angry. But he went with the ad nice, and that made me interested. And as I was walking towards the door, I finally was like, I gotta look and see the face of the man who was so angry at me. He would say, yeah, nice. So I take a few steps, and then I gander back, and we catch each other's eye. And then I added this little thing. I went, (laughs) I don't think that was necessary. Because he immediately came back with, (laughs) I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. Look, I kept going towards the door, and I'm still in calm, cool, collect mode. I'm still savvy, okay? The second I get outside the automatic doors, which when they open, always make you feel like a Jedi, like you did that shit with your mind. The second I get out of his eye shot, I start running to my car like a fucking gazelle, okay? I'm actually hopping over cars. I'm very, very gazelle-like when I'm afraid. I get into my vehicle, I take off. Because I don't want this guy to come out and get my license plate number. I didn't even want him to have that because we all know that killers always have a hookup at the DMV. They always have a crazy friend who'll give me your address and all your fucking info for like a steak dinner and a Charms blow pop or something. No. So I, I take off. And then as I'm driving away in my vehicle, I start to think about it. And I think, oh my God, can you imagine if this guy really killed me? Killed me just because I cut him in line. Killed me. Finds where I live, right? I'm not home. <laughs> Breaks in the door. Hides in my closet for seven hours talking to himself. Come home. (laughs) You're gonna die. (laughs) Come home. (laughs) I'll show you who's boss. (laughs) 
then I start wondering, what do you think he would say to me? What would he say to me? What would be the last thing he would say right before he sliced my throat? Because the killers in the movies always have to say that one last cool thing. They step out of the alley. Merry Christmas. (laughs) What do you think he would say right before he sliced my throat? Probably something like this. He'd probably come out and go, who's cut now? (laughs) That'd be a good one. I would have to... Who's cut now? Yeah. I don't know what he would say, but I do know what would piss him off. This would piss him off. What if as he was about to step out to slice my throat, someone just stepped in front of him and sliced my throat first? Oh, he'd be pissed. 